Good morning. It is nine o'clock and I just woke up. I don't remember the last time that I've slept in this late. I love getting up early. I usually get up around 5.15 with my husband to make him lunch and just send him off to work. And then I just like having those first uh, few hours of the morning. It's nice and quiet and none of the kids are awake so I can get started on my day. I can have some quiet time and be ready for the day when they wake up. But the sleep was more important <laughs> today. So just now getting started with my day and I'm going to take you guys along with me. We have a busy day ahead on the farm. All right, the first thing I'm going to do today is get laundry going. So I need to wash diapers today and I wanna get that going. That way I can get them out on the clothesline and they can dry. I usually wash diapers when I have about five or six clean ones left. So in my cloth diaper stash, I have a total of about 24 diapers. That's like on the bare minimum side, but I just don't mind the extra laundry. Um, so yeah, here we go. Ernie is not quite six months old yet. He's still not eating solids. So at this point, my washing routine is very low maintenance. I don't have to worry about spraying diapers down since breast milk poop is totally water soluble. Um, all I have to do is just throw my dirty diapers in a wet bag, wait until it's time to do laundry, throw everything in the washer, wash them, and then dry them. Diapers, cloth wipes, and wet bag will all go into the washer and I do run a rinse and spin cycle before I wash. So I rinse and spin and then I wash with homemade detergent and line dry whenever possible. Now that I've got the laundry going, I'm going to get dressed for the day, make my bed, and then head into the kitchen to do a few things before going outside to do morning chores with the kids. Making my bed each morning is non-negotiable for me and for the kids too. I just feel like no matter how my day goes, whether it's good or bad or long or exhausting or a great day, I know that I will get to get into a nice clean made bed at the end of the day, which is a good feeling. Once I get ready for the day and make my bed, then I come out into the kitchen and start doing a few chores out here. So first I always make sure to fill up our Berkey. We have a crown Berkey. It's humongous, but we drink a lot of water and I use a lot of water throughout the day. So I do have to fill it every day, probably every day, maybe every other day. Um, but once I do that, then I feed my sourdough starter. I store my starter on the counter because I use it a lot. And even on the days that I don't use it or forget to feed it, I just put some discard in whatever recipe that I'm making. So I always find a way to use it. I've had a starter for probably five or six years now. And I have a few blog posts on starting and keeping a sourdough starter and my favorite recipes that I will link in cards and the description below. I normally like to end my day by cleaning the kitchen. That way I know I can wake up and it's just a nice clean space to start my day, but sometimes it just doesn't get done. I at least like to try to get the dishes done so that all I have to do is maybe dry and put them away um, in the morning. And normally when I don't sleep in, I'm up really, really early and I have a couple hours before the kids wake up to finish up anything that didn't get done the day before or just get a jump start on my day and then have some quiet time for my Bible study and any planning I need to do. When it's during our school year, I do our homeschool planning in the morning before the kids wake up. One of my favorite things about homeschooling is the freedom to ease into our day. We don't have that morning rush and we've, we've done that before. I have experience doing that. My kids have gone to school before and mornings were always so chaotic and stressful and I felt like no matter how well prepared I was, they just weren't hungry that early in the morning and I, I was trying to get them a good meal before they got out the door and I always just ended up so much more rushed than I would like to be. And now we get to make breakfast, take our time, and just really enjoy the morning time together. One thing I like to make a lot during the spring and summer when we have a lot of milk and eggs is a Dutch baby. It's really simple, just a few ingredients, easy to make, 
and I make it in a big cast iron skillet which is pretty much nonstick. so the cleanup is really really easy too. All I have to do is just wash my bowl and wipe down the skillet. I will be sure to link my recipe in the description. One thing that has been different for me in this postpartum season is that I cannot have coffee daily. I'm just not tolerating that well, so maybe once or twice a week and definitely not on an empty stomach. So I have been drinking a goat coffee, which is delicious, and once you try it, you are going to be hooked. All you do is just add an egg yolk, a scoop of, I add a scoop of collagen powder and then some sugar or maple syrup to your mug and you can just use a little whisk to mix it up but I like to whip it with my immersion blender which just makes it very extra and delicious. And then pour your hot coffee over and enjoy. It is fabulous and also very good for you. When you have a brand new baby, getting that latch established can take some time and it might feel like you need to sit down and totally focus every time you nurse, but as they get older, then, you know, it gets easier and Ernie's six months old, I nurse on the go pretty much all the time now. Another reason I like making Dutch babies, to be honest, is because they look pretty cool when they come out of the oven all puffed up. The kids always love to see me take the Dutch baby out. It's nice and poofy, and then after a minute, it starts to kind of sink down, which, which is normal, but this is definitely one of their favorites too. This morning, I had some leftover cream cheese filling and blackberry filling from some pie that I made and I put that on top of our Dutch baby, which was delicious. Each of the three big kids is assigned a meal to clean up after, and that works really well because they know exactly what's expected of them. I don't have to ask them to do it every day. I've trained them what to do, how to do it, and they know that that's just what they need to do after the meal. So my youngest cleans up after breakfast, and then my middle after lunch and our oldest cleans up after supper and that has just worked out really well for us. After the cloth diapers finished on the rinse cycle, I just ran them through on a regular wash cycle. I do make my own detergent and it works great for me, but I have heard a lot of people say that they have problems with natural detergents or homemade detergents not getting their cloth diapers clean enough. So I'm not exactly sure what makes the difference or why that is, but I've had good luck with it. So I think it's definitely worth a try if it's something that you are interested in. I do know that line drying as much as possible does make a huge difference and the sun is going to be your best friend when it comes to stain removal. I've used these same Green Mountain diapers on multiple babies and they have held up great and after a day drying out in the sun, they look brand new. I'll link my cloth diapers in the description and I have a discount code for Green Mountain as well. It is one of my favorite companies. They share a lot of my same values and just truly make great products. It is July right now and so the worst part of weeding is behind me with the hot and dry weather, but I still spend about an hour a day out here in the garden just weeding, pruning, fertilizing, harvesting, and I really do enjoy that time. I've got lots of pumpkins planted, so that's always exciting. I love harvesting pumpkins in the late summer and early fall. Every year I plant green beans on this tunnel here, and it is one of my favorite things. And I experiment a little bit every year. I have my favorite green bean right here. These are Blauhilde green beans. And every year I plant them on one side and then I try a new variety. And every single year the Blauhilde beans just take off and blow every other variety out of the water. So you can see I have another variety over here. So I think I'm done experimenting. Um, from now on I'm just going to stick with what I know works well. And for me that is Blauhilde. Got lots of squash and melons planted. Pretty good sized patch of sweet potatoes here. And those, those won't be ready until the fall. Got some potatoes that are ready to be harvested. And back here 
My husband actually just cleared out more space. We're adding on to the back of the garden. Um, he did this with a skid steer, <laughs> so it was pretty quick and easy. And now I just need to work on building this soil up because next year we're going to put grapevines and berries back here in this, this space. And around the outside of our garden, around the border, we have our fruit trees. You can kind of see several of them here. While I'm back here, I'll show you guys our bees. At first, I was a little bit nervous about having the bees this close to the garden, but it's been just fine. They've been here a few years and I have never gotten stung. I don't really have a cleaning schedule. I just try to fit in what I can, where I can. Life on the farm is just pretty hectic and busy all the time and our schedule changes a lot. So a really rigid cleaning schedule just wouldn't work for me. Um, while I'm talking about cleaning, I do have to tell you guys about my Miele vacuum. It is one of my favorite things. It is truly a workhorse. I tried two sharks and a Dyson cordless vacuums before I got this because I really do love the idea of a cordless vacuum, but none of them made it longer than a year. And this thing will last forever. I actually just saw a lady post on Instagram that she's had hers for 23 years. So that is my kind of vacuum. It is amazing. And while I clean, I always listen to one of my favorite podcasts, which is Albert Muller. I can get overwhelmed by the news. Sometimes it's just so doom and gloom. So I really love that he shares news and events from a Christian worldview. That is just so important that we're always taking everything back to the Bible and asking, what does God think about this? And what are we to think about this as Christians? So the kids already did most of the farm chores, but I'm just going to go do a few more things and check on everything. It is really, really hot right now. And it's very important that all of the animals have water. Um, you know, it, it wouldn't take too long at all in this heat for something really bad to happen. So, you know, if the pigs' water wasn't working or they didn't have water, they could die on a day like this. So it's just really important. I totally trust the kids, but I need to double check some things. So first I'm going to open up our little brooder house. Right now, we, I have eggs in the incubator and they're eggs from here from the farm. Um, I've got a rooster, so all of our eggs are fertile. So I have eggs in the incubator and I just keep that thing running. It takes 21 days for eggs to hatch and I keep it running all summer. because that way we have chicks coming up to replace our layers that are getting older. So I've got eggs in the incubator and I have baby chicks here in our brooder house. This is just right by our house. I'm right outside the house right now. You can see it behind me. And this little building here was actually a woodshed for years and years and years. But I use one side of it as a little brooder house for the baby chicks because we have our big chickens down by all the livestock, by the pigs, by the cows. And when we have brand new baby chicks, I'm just not comfortable putting them down there just yet for obvious reasons. They, they might get stepped on. So I keep them up here. So let me show you, show you inside the brooder house here going to open up you can see the baby chickies in there see them there they are got about 10 babies in here right now and the plan is the rooster the the hens the pullets will obviously just stay in our our laying flock and then any that are roosters i only want to keep one or two roosters here on the farm. We don't we don't need a bunch of roosters running around. So um, any roosters will just get butchered and those will be my meat birds. My rooster that I have now, I believe he's a Rhode Island Red and Rhode Island Reds are really good dual purpose birds. They're pretty meaty um, and also good laying birds. So that's, that's a really good rooster to have because any of his chicks that come up will have quite a bit of meat on them. All right, baby chicks are good to go. Their water's full. I'm gonna walk now down to check on the other livestock, on the big chickens, on the pigs, and on the cows. So as I said, the brooder house is right outside of our house, kind of right in the back of our house. But the rest of the animals are down the lane here. And they all live together. We don't have them separated. The cows, the pigs, and the chickens 
all live in the same space. Cows are not out here right now, but we'll, we will uh, walk back and see them. It's already hot, so they're probably in the shade. But I can see that the kids already filled up their water, so that's good. I, like I said, I, I trust the kids, but I like to double check. And then they also ran a hose. You can see that behind me over to where I'm gonna walk next. They ran a hose over to the pig's lot because on days like today, they will have to come down here a couple times a day and uh, water down the pigs. It's just, pigs pigs can't sweat, so they get really, really hot really easily. And we, we've got a couple mud holes over there for them, so the kids will make sure that those stay full. And like I said, they'll just water them down. We have about a month until the fair. And the pigs we have up here now, they are fair pigs. They are 4-H pigs. Uh, the kids will, get to pick which we've got four and they'll pick two of them to take to show at the fair so they're trying to really really keep them in good shape and make sure that all goes well until the fair let's go check on the pigs the cows and the big chickens all right So you can see here the pigs have plenty of water. The kids have done a really good job. They they really enjoy this part, filling all the, the water holes. So the pigs should be good to go today. You can see behind me, their water is full. And you know, the really nice thing about keeping all of your livestock together is that I don't have to mess with chicken waters. Chicken waters are no fun. Chickens are just, they're so messy and it's just kind of a pain to fill fill those little things up you gotta unscrew them and it's just easier to keep your chickens with your your pigs and your cows because they can drink out of out of their waters and you don't have to fill them nearly as often so let's see the pigs are they're sleeping here they are yep they're sleepy it's a hot day they're already already pooped out um, and as you can see, there are chickens just kind of everywhere. Now, the pigs, while they're technically with the cows, um, they are fenced in in their own little area. It's just kind of inside of the pasture. We have one of the pastures we keep our cows in. And I'll show you the cows. I see them right over there. Hi, girls. Hi, girlies. Got a couple eggs this morning so far. There's our rooster. He is such a good boy. He is so nice. He never chases us. He's never, never mean, never aggressive, only when he needs to be. And he is very protective of his flock. So I've been told he's, somebody Somebody gave him to me. And I've been told he's a Rhode Island Red. I'm not, I'm not totally sure though, but uh, that'd be great if he is. All right, so my job was really easy this morning. Just checking on everything making sure everybody's doing good um it's, it's closed here it is so nice so nice as the kids get older and you know they've been around the animals for a while and they start to get used to how things work and they are genuine helpers you know when they're little it's like they want to be helpers but it's almost more work uh, than it is help to take them along but take them along because they learn and it really does pay off. They become such such valuable helpers on the farm. Um, you know, you don't have to look back too many generations to find a time when children were not considered burdens. They were considered valuable, valuable um, additions to the family and helpers. So I'm all finished. I'm going to head back up to the house. I don't have to milk this morning. I just let one of my cows dry up. She's five or six months pregnant, something like that. And her production had kind of gone way down anyway. So I figured it was time to dry her up and give her a little break before she calves again. And then my other cow, she, we're still calf sharing with her. So her calf is still on her nursing. And so whenever I want milk, all we have to do is just separate the calf and for a few hours or overnight, and then I can milk her in the morning and get tons of milk. I didn't need any milk today, so I'm gonna skip milking, but if you want to see my milking routine, then I will link a video in the description and in cards of just my regular milking process and also uh, taking the cream from that milk and making cultured butter. Since I slept in today, our day's kind of thrown off, so 
it is already one o'clock and we haven't had lunch yet but that's because breakfast was later so uh, my older kids are old enough now to where if i do sleep in it's very very rare and like i said i don't remember the last time in my adult life i've slept until nine but if i do sleep in a little bit then they know what to do i have a letter board back in their hallway that has their daily tasks on there. And it's just simple stuff like get dressed, brush your teeth, make your bed, tidy your room, and then go do farm chores. Um, and that's just a good reminder for them. So they did all that before I got up and they, they know that if I'm sleeping, they can get themselves a snack. So we had a late breakfast. We're going to have a little bit of a later lunch, but that's fine because we do have ball games tonight and dinner will be late too. So everything is just kind of pushed back. I got all my chores done and I had a little time. So the kids are playing with Ernie. I jumped in the shower and now I'm going to think about what I'm making for lunch and dinner. I'm not a meal planner. Um, I just try to make sure that I have some kind of meat thawed out in the fridge. There is always a steady supply of dishes on the homestead. When you're cooking three meals a day from scratch and the kids are home eating all day and snacking all day, there's just a lot of dishes. There's no way around that. And I am just not a dishwasher person. I do own one, but I like to do dishes by hand. I'm a big fan of leftovers. We're not really picky eaters. We will just eat whatever we've got. Um, so probably once or twice a week, I kind of just do a fridge clean out and whatever we have, I make a meal out of that. So that's what I did. I had some leftover roast beef pot pie, had some rice, just threw all that together. And now we're going to eat. At lunchtime, I always read to the kids out of our Story of the World history book, and they absolutely love it. They never want me to stop reading, so we're going to sit down and eat, and I'm going to read to them. After that, I will start getting ready for supper. I do have the kids help with laundry, so on a good day when we have a nice breeze, if we stay on it, we can get probably four or five loads of laundry dried out on the clothesline. And laundry is another thing I do not have a schedule for, especially in the warmer months, because when you're wanting to dry your clothes outside, you just kind of have to take advantage when you have nice days. I started supper a little bit earlier than usual today because we do have ball games tonight and I just want to have everything ready. I was making tortillas for taco night, but that ended up not working out because John got home and he really needed my help, so I was not able to finish supper. John just called me and said that he needs me to drive down to the field right now and help pick up as many straw bales as possible because he just needs me to come down there. So I don't know how we're gonna get all this done, but here we go. I wasn't able to finish making supper and we were about half an hour late to our ball games, but it all worked out. My mom and dad ended up coming and she brought food for all of us without even knowing that we hadn't been able to eat. I do love summer, but between the farm and the homestead and the gardens and baseball, it's a lot. We are very, very busy, very long days, but it's all stuff that I like to be doing, so I can't complain. This is my husband, John, on the tractor there, and his dad. They run the show. I am just here to help. And no, I don't normally pick up straw bales in a dress, but that's what I had on. And I needed to be, we needed to be, needed to be ready to leave for the game straight from the field. So John just had me drive my car down to the field with all of our bags packed and everything. That way we could head out as soon as we were finished. Ernie! Ernie! Hi, baby! What's that? Ernie did come with us this time. He can sit up, but that's pretty much it. He's not mobile yet. So once he's mobile, then he will not be able to come with us when we work down in the field until he's old enough to drive the tractor. You just can't be too safe. Accidents do happen. So for a few years, he will have to stay back with grandma and I'm sure he won't mind that.
since we left straight from the field, this was pretty much it for our day on the farm, and it was a pretty typical summer day. Thanks for watching along, and be sure to click subscribe before you go to see more videos on motherhood, homesteading, and life on our fifth generation farm. Cheese, Ernie! Hi, baby! Good pitch. Mom, try it. Mom, try it. Strike three. Good pitch.